I got this article directly from the FDA website. Scientists build a healthy dietary pattern using ultra-processed fruit foods. Scientists at the USDA Agricultural Research Services, ARS, Grand Forks Human Nutrition Research Center led a study that demonstrates it is possible to build a healthy diet with 91% of the calories coming from ultra-processed foods as classified using the NOVA scale, while still following the recommendations from the 2020-2025 Dietary Guidelines for Americans the study highlights the versatility of using those guidelines, uh, guideline recommendations in constructing healthy menus. Quote, The study is a proof of concept that shows a more balanced view of healthy eating patterns where using ultra-processed foods can be an option, unquote, said ARS research nutritionist Julie Hess at the Grand Forks Human Nutrition Research Center. Quote, According to current dietary recommendations, the nutrient content of a food and its place in a food group are more important than the extent to which a food was processed, unquote. Some of the ultra-processed foods used in this menu include canned beans, instant oatmeal, ultra-filtered milk, whole wheat bread, and dried fruit. Quote, we use the healthy eating index to assess the quality of the diet as it aligns with key DGA recommendations. The menu we developed scored 86 out of 100 points on the Healthy Eating Index of 2015, meeting most of the thresholds except for sodium content, which it exceeded recommendations, and whole grains in which it was slightly deficient. Okay, I'm sorry. First of all, that's my tax dollars at work. <clears throat> we put money into doing this research to see if it was possible to create an, a healthy diet out of 91% ultra-processed foods. So let's just put that aside. I can't think of anywhere that, that money could have gone to better use. Um, what's going on here? Is this, it, the foods they mentioned, canned beans, that doesn't sound like an ultra-processed food to me. It seems like they're playing a little fast and loose with that definition. That, to me, is the bigger issue with this, is that, you know, it's, it's nothing against the Nova classification. Right. But when you have a classification system like this, by that's like, that's what I feel like was the take home message of a study like this. Yeah. To prove that kind of drawing these lines in the sand between classifications, as useful as they are as just a tool, right. It can cause some disagreement. Well, is this can of beans worse than this protein powder? Right. That's, Ultra, also technically ultra processed. Right. Right. So you just have these food products. They're in a classification because it's in group three or group four. It's automatic. It has to be automatically bad. Right? right. So I think it just challenges again, something that maybe I'm guilty of viewing as sort of black and white, ultra processed. Not, we got to eat all pro food that are not processed at all. Yeah. Raw you know? foods. R right. Right. So I think it, it challenges that way of thinking, at least for me, because a lot of these, these, you know, lines in the sand are sort of arbitrary. Okay. And I think it might, it's almost like a waste of time sometimes to argue those sorts of things when looking at somebody's overall dietary pattern. Okay. So what, if I understand you, you're saying some of this delineation, some of these lines in the sand mm -hmm. are arbitrary and the definition, if you're sticking to a strict definition, things that we would commonly think of as not being ultra processed are technically ultra processed. And therefore, uh, you can't just blanket say ultra processed foods are bad, that there are plenty of exceptions to that rule mm -hmm. enough so that you can build a healthy balanced diet out of it. Yeah. Okay. That being said, when most people, me, I'll, I'll, I'll be the one here. When I think of ultra processed foods, I'm thinking cheese whiz. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, you know, crazy ice cream derivative things. I'm thinking, you know, uh, macaroni and cheese that comes in a blue box. It tastes amazing. It's better when it's Velveeta cheese. I'm going to a lot of cheese examples here because that's my favorite ultra processed food. Cheesy, mm -hmm. man. Yeah. Um, that's what I think. That's what I think of frozen dinners, yep. you know? <laughs> oh man. And the hunger man. 
Yes, exactly. And and you're saying that's yes, those are ultra processed, but that's not the only thing that's ultra processed mm-hmm. technically. Right. Okay. Right. So yeah, part of it is understanding what exactly is in what category, you know? So that so right, in your case and in most people, you're assuming it's just those sort of things. The, the hyper sweet, hyper palatable, right. added fat, added sugar, add you know, the, all of those sorts of things. Yeah. That um when really there are there are things, you know, microwavable meals, certain chicken patties or certain canned foods, frozen certain frozen other uh fruits or vegetables. Right. Those those can almost make their way into those categories. And R- so So know. like pre cut frozen, you know, mixed vegetables might qualify as being mm-hmm. ultra processed. Yes. But I don't think anybody would argue that frozen vegetables are, um, you know, just as unhealthy as shells and cheese. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I saw that they incorporated things like raisins. Yeah. Other dried fruits, which, you know, there, there is more sugar per, per serving for the most part of those items versus a, you know, raw piece of fruit. Yeah. But ultimately, yeah, this this kind of challenged the way I think about things. Okay, and, I mean, it really has. I I don't I don't know. It's because we talk so much about ultra processed foods, trying to you know uh, maintain a dietary pattern that is low in minimally low in ultra processed foods and all those sorts of things. But to slap blanket labels on a diet is bad or good or um almost force somebody into worrying too much about that stuff instead of looking at each food and each thing that you select on a you know on a case by case basis. I mean, I eat oatmeal pretty much every day. I yeah. think frozen meals play a role. I think anything that's not adding a ton of saturated fat is a is an option. Things that don't add a ton of extra sugar, those are an option. But yeah, it's just further proof that the the categorization is often the problem. Yeah, you, you know? can't you can't just draw a line and say, well, it's not in that category, therefore it's okay. Mm-hmm.